name is Christian Guerra. I'm from the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Uh, I work for the Boston Art Commission, and I just wanted to introduce myself and this project. Um, uh, we are part of the City of Boston. We are working in collaboration with our other city partners. And uh, in large part, we're really focusing on today just to recap uh, what's happening in the North Square, uh, the renovation process, learn about our city's public art uh, program, and introduce AJ and Jeremy, our design, uh, review whatever initial concepts they've developed, and then um, solicit any feedback, and also, have anyone sign up for the advisory committee? Uh, I'll leave the sign-in sheet right here. Um. Hi, uh, Joe Fleury from the Public Works Department, uh, project manager on the uh, North Square construction. Um, here's a brief uh, overview of the project so far. Um, we're at seventy-five percent design. We've had a couple public meetings. Uh, um, uh, over at, one was here and one was at the, uh, the St. John's School. Um, concept we came up is going to leave the square largely similar. Um, the biggest thing we were going for, um, we got out of the process was leave it looking the same. We just need to get accessibility running through there. Um, so we're going to have accessible paths running through. Uh, within the square itself, uh, they'll be, we'll take out some of the cost. See that lighter grid, we're going to put in uh, smooth uh, granite, uh, essentially two by two tiles. No concrete? No concrete. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, and that's ADA. <laughs> yeah. Same look, will be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see it here. Um, so we'll have accessible paths running through. This will all be in the roadway. It'll be uh, the cobblestones. So we'll get that, that, that feel that we have now. It'll, in the roadway, especially, it'll keep the cars going relatively slow. Um, I don't want to get too much into the design. Um, I'd be happy to, to stay after, um, answer any questions you have, but today is really the hard portion of it. Um, we have a $2 million total budget for the project. Um, we carved out $200,000 to do for the public art. Um, and with that, I'll leave it with the art team. That is. Okay, just, can I just ask a question? So the fences, are they those going to be those the are ballers with the chain. It's, 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 it's not a, yeah, it's, they're going to be reset, on new stanchions, repainted. Um, like I said, it's going to be largely similar. Um, just brought to 21st century standards. Mm -hmm. But the visuals of the past. Exactly. Yep. So, so, like Joe said, uh, we're integrating our public art program into the into our city projects. So part of their budget is going towards the art. Uh, so with that, we want to engage our city departments that know far more about construction and design and development than we do, uh, but also integrate our public art uh, community-built process that really integrates city and community voices. We want to hear from you, and we did hear from you earlier, uh, to collect what you see as the community's vision. What do you want to identify? What do you want to hold on to? and what makes a meaningful piece of art for North Square, and specifically in the larger game of North End. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Boston Art Commission uh, is the board I work for. Uh, it's an independent board that um, advises the city on commissioning, um, advocating, uh, advising artists throughout the city, and a conservation of all public art. Uh, our general public vision for the city's art collection is to really uh, change the direction of where we have been in the last uh, 20 years, to really think about our collection as a whole and be more holistic and kind of broaden the, uh, fill the gaps of where our collection is. So that means that we're really looking for excellent works of art that are innovative in theme. Uh, that we're honoring all the citizens of Boston and that we're building things that are excellently designed but also built to last. Uh, we developed a public art vision and a project vision for this community through two um, community process meetings that we had last, two summers ago, one summer ago, sorry. And out of that meeting, we really uh, pulled things that people were saying about 
how the North Square has a strong sense of place. People know when they're here and really value that. That is important to the business owners, that's important to the people that live here, and that's the people that want to come and visit here. So also, uh, something else came up that was preserving open space, really focusing on community gathering, uh, pulling from the historical references in that visual, but also thinking in contemporary perspectives of accessible. So uh, with that, uh, we developed an RFP based off of all of those vision statements and those values that we pulled from the community, uh, and we selected an artist. And the art selection process was really based off of who can think of, develop a concept that meets those guidelines, but also our standards of excellence in being able to actually execute a project. And we selected AMG Design. And we're kind of in the process of introducing the artist to the community, having these community engagement processes, and a later on, design and development will be more fleshed out, formal uh, BAC city approval will be given, and then the artwork will be installed. What sort of response did you get to your RFP? In terms of um, actually, we got our highest um, response for our new procurement process, which was about 100 people. Yes. So uh, we had to follow construction guidelines, which was a uh, very, uh, very different process than more usually asking artists to supply, apply for, so the, uh, the threshold of effort is higher, and so there's also an expertise of applying to things that's slightly different, and it does favor more, more experienced artists uh, and larger art firms and architecture firms, but in our case, because we were very focused on the neighborhood's vision and community values, we were really able to balance that experience to really specify uh, build off of community needs and values. So we're able to get someone really local that understands these things with a lot of experience. And here I'm Jeremy Angier of AMJ Art and Design. Thank you all uh, uh, for waiting through us, our technical issues there. And um, I see that some of you were here uh, a couple of weeks ago when we gave some of this presentation already, but um, I know that some of this will be familiar to you, but we'll also be talking about some new things. Um, we'll, uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves to you in our previous work first. Um, some of our ideas about North Square that we're reacting to and integrating into a concept. And then finally, we're going to show you um, some uh, basic ideas for the sculptures and talk a little bit about the place that we really it's very important to us to have your feedback at this stage and your impressions on what uh, the sculpture locations. So um, with that, this is just a, a slide of some of our uh, previous work. Um, you can see that the majority of our work is bronze and, and fairly traditional looking and historically aware. We're both traditionally trained artists. And we also have some digital capabilities which we try to incorporate into traditional processes, not the other way around. The contemporary, the traditional, not the other way. Um, on, on the top there are some traditional statues, St. Ignatius, a great boxer named Stanley Ketchel, St. Sebastian, there's a, a piece there for Sarasota National Cemetery all the way on the right. Um, and then on the bottom, to the right is the Bill Russell Legacy Project, which is just up the street at City Hall Plaza. Um, that's a piece that integrates a lot of different approaches to public art, traditional bronze sculpture. It's also an interactive playground where kids come and play and interact with the different units of the artwork. And it also was the result of the community engagement process on a number of different levels. Two sculptures were recently added that were the result of collaboration with different groups of kids, which is something we want to do here, too. Um, and then finally, down here is a temporary work that we did for Four Point Channel, and very different from some of our other works. Some of you might have seen it. It was Connecticut and uh, Four Point Channel for about two months in 2016. Um, and it, it took on immigration issues and the refugee crisis. Um, so moving forward. The North Square is um, considered to be the oldest square in Boston and perhaps even the whole country. Um, there's a real density of history here. And um, the square is really a window into, into history, local history and even um, American history as a whole. There are so many stories in North Square. Um, the stories are attached to different 
threads of his history. You know, we're saying threads because if you start thinking about the colonial era in North Square, certain names are going to pop up. Um, and those names might have something to do with the history of um, marine activity in North Square. The people who, who have lived in North Square have tended to be fishermen, very closely related to the sea, just like the square is near the sea. Um, they would have gone to Seaman's Bethel, which is now Sacred Heart. Um, and of course, um, all of the different people that have lived in North Square have in one way or another left their marks, whether they become famous and are written in history or become uh, a church member of a family, um, um, came from another country and made, made their way here. So those stories are there and um, they're all part of North Square and we want you to know how aware of that we are. But there's not just one history, there are many histories there. We're, we're learning more and more as we get into this project. Um, it's a very complicated history, to say the least. Um, and as a way of sort of organizing all the different historical threads that are coming into the square, we have identified four main um, themes that we're um, focusing on. One is the early colonial history. Another is immigrants and immigration and the families who've come here from all over the world and made this place home. Another is the maritime history, so seafaring and fishing and trade and, and naval warfare even has, has been a big part of um, the North End. And then cultural traditions, especially the feasts and processions of the North End. Here you can see uh, different images of some of the facades on North Square and other features of North Square. Of course, you have the Freedom Trail. You also have the Mariners in. You have Paul Revere House probably somewhere in here. Yes, top right corner. Um, just all of these different facades, they're different architectural information. They speak to different eras and different people. Um, so everywhere you look, depending on what direction you're looking at, you're looking into a different at a different moment in, in Boston history and even in American history. And then speaking of looking, one of the most uh, striking things about the physical space of North Square is the fact that as you're standing back here and you're looking out from this sort of nestled safe place, you're seeing this enormous window onto Boston and all of its change and you're embedded and nestled in a place of history. And you look at this big space from this small space. And that is so distinctive about the quality of the space that um, we're thinking of it as an organizing principle for four separate sculptures in bronze. That one idea. Small space, big view. Um, here, is an, um, here are different reference images for the first sculpture. Not this, you know, these aren't designs for the sculpture because we haven't begun that process yet. But we're very interested in the idea of a map in bronze of three-dimensional buildings that can help people locate themselves in the city and in the North End. Um, the map uh, is a place that helps you relate one part, uh, one part of North End, the North End to the other, and it could perhaps become a repository for stories digitally. That is, there might be some way of creating identifiers in the bronze that could connect you to an online site where people's actual stories of their their grandmothers, their grandfathers who came here, those stories would get stored alongside the story of Paul Revere. Yeah, and this and probably all the sculptures, um, something we'd like to make in consultation and collaboration with uh, neighborhood people and storytellers from the area and local neighborhood groups. Um, the second sculpture would be a colonial historical relief sculpture. So this um, goes way back to the earliest um, times of North Square. Um, this could show life at that time, um, people doing business in the streets with a view down to the waterfront with Long Wharf, sailing ships, fishing ships, a lot of activity. Um, this, uh, we'd like to think about positioning this near the uh, Mariner's House. And then it would be positioned such that it's standing up and you can sort of see through it. So it's perforated. And then you can see the, you can see the architecture through this um, 
historical scene. So you kind of get a, again, that's echoing the theme of um, getting a wider view from a, from a small vantage point. And this sculpture would be a, um, a nautical celestial navigation instrument. Um, and that's something that takes astronomical measurements in order to locate yourself on the globe from a single position, usually on board a ship. Um, and this sculpture could be located near the um, former Siemens Bethel. And that's also near the intersection of um, Sun Suncourt and Bloom Street seems appropriate for this kind of um, idea. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, uh, it would be interactive, but not as a functioning navigational instrument for <coughs> practical reasons, and, and because we want to take a, an advantage of the opportunity to make a complex scientific instrument fun and usable for kids. Um, so you would look through a scope, but instead of seeing a horizon line or an actual feature, you might see the story of uh, for instance, uh, Paul Revere on his horse, or some other story that happened in, in North Square. Um, the fourth sculpture is one of my favorites, um, and it refers to, we're calling it a collaborative cave sculpture. Um, there are two saints um, that are celebrated in North Square, uh, uh, St. Rosalia, or St. Rosalia, and Madonna della Cava, and these are stories of women related to caves. Um, and of course, St. Rosalia, St. Rosalia's effigy is stored right inside Sacred Heart Church on the other side of that door, and her effigy is carried through the square. And so we have this idea of creating a sculpture of a woman in the cave, and the cave would actually be made with the help of, of um, the local school children, and where they would contribute um, elements to the cave. And so this is. All of the four sculptures, I don't think we mentioned this, but they, of course, yeah, they'll be in bronze. Um, we're thinking that the color of the bronze, you can color bronze in different ways, it would be fairly traditional and would have highlighted parts to evoke marine instruments and darker parts that connect the sculptures to the chain. And that they would all be um, physically not overly large because we don't want the sculptures to dominate the space in any way. Um, they should be little focal points that you have intimate experiences at. Uh, so. And this is a recap of what I just said. And each one, again, dealing with that idea of small space, big view. And then we can skip ahead. So here is the image that we looked at earlier with Joe. And uh, this is our rendering of uh, the designs, uh, the de design drawings where they are now. Um, we do a lot of digital visualization in order for us to figure out how the sculptures are going to look in this space. So this is, as far as we understand it, a rough idea of uh, the color of the paving. Darker cobblestones uh, will highlight the areas of lighter gray paving. Um, and then, I don't know if you can make this out, but there are um, four units here. Those four blue units, those are the sculptures that, the uh, locations for the sculptures we're proposing. And they're punctuated by benches. Um, and you can see the benches around the planter. That's the planter that is there now. I think it's more or less where it was. And it's surrounded by, the planter itself is surrounded by benches, and then on the perimeter, a good distance away from those benches are other benches. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a perspective view of that plant. Um, story map, colonial relief, cave sculpture, marine instrument. Mm -hmm. And then the, you can see that the, the sculptures, the bases have benches incorporated in with them. A couple of them do. And then there are possibly other benches around the perimeter of that paved area as well. We connected to the sculptures. And then also we're imagining, um, we, as we mentioned briefly, so here's the, the nautical instrument. Yep. If it has a scope, it would need a, a step for smaller people to look through it. Mm -hmm. And that would become an, a, a part of the sculpture base. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. So We're also thinking of this um, little end pointer, which is uh, orienting north. Mm -hmm. Great. Is that it? Yeah, oh, okay, there you go. So, um, 
Uh, we would like to, to, to hear what your thoughts are about the locations, the sculptures, the concepts, and everything. Anything, uh, as long as we still have time. Yeah, we are literally going to get thrown out in about, it, they'll come and start flashing the lights in about five minutes. So okay. I think um, if you can take some, a few comments and then perhaps you could announce to the group how they can contact yeah, you. Let's put that to that page where we have our information. Yes, that's a great idea. So. Um, but can, can yes. we have a few comments? Where, where is the statue of Rose Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> You're two questions. doors away from where she was born. Good question. Good question. A very good question. Um, people have no idea where she was there. Okay. Without a sign, there's nothing. Absolutely. It doesn't take much. I really couldn't agree with you more. So I'll say. <laughs> I, 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 I certainly she, her her <coughs> history here will be acknowledged in the story repository map. Um, at for our from our perspective, we were um, following up on an RFP that stipulated that the there were certain ideas that we were addressing with the sculptures and with our concepts. Um, so we we. Um, there were so many different and important people around North Square that a statue, yeah. No, but yeah, no, you're right. No, I, I'm not suggesting that you take one of those statues up and pull one of her, but something there should be something. Like there, should be something. Well, well, there should be a plaque on right the building on Garden Place, but unfortunately, yeah, exactly. that has that's something we, we would put in the map. We're hoping to start construction of the, the larger North Square project late this summer, early fall. Um, this would be like the last thing that went in um, sometime next year. The, the artwork. So you're hoping that the entire renovation of the square will be done before the end of the year? End of next year. End of next year, 2018. Hope you make sure that the skateboarders can't ruin it. Uh, yeah. ruin most of the mm. public spaces here. Oh, I would love to. Well, put up a sign, no skateboarders. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. The bricks that we don't will remain there. Will they be the original bricks? No. What kind of bricks? Wire cut bricks. Why not the Anti original bricks? Okay. Excuse me? Why not the original bricks? The, our Disabilities Commission does not like uh, the bricks because they form a uh, unstable, not unstable, but uh, <coughs> a non-smooth surface uh, for anybody in a wheelchair. It's a wire cut brick. It's, it's, it's got a real, so there's no mortar. They're hand tight. They're really close together. Walking over them if they're installed correctly, um, roll it over. You won't, feel, you won't feel it. Is it still a brick or a paper? It's a brick. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll look very similar to what's up there now, except it will be extremely flat. It'll be, it'll be tight. It won't be any more. Okay. Any, any, um, we have had cobblestones. So cobblestones are largely romantic. Um, you did say you were moving them. What's you happening? Do you do some What's happening to them? Yeah, yeah, where are they going? What are you doing with them? Yeah. They're historic. Uh, they're from about 1970. Okay. Um, they're not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, this was all asphalt in like the 50s, 60s. Uh, That's um, old, old historic cobblestones. You see that he wrapped. Okay. We, we have another. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I just want to say I think your work is really beautiful, and um, I appreciate the respect for your information to this whole process. And thank you for coming. I know you came to Portland, so thank you for. Thank you so very much.